Hello good people of YouTube, this is Sean with Feature View Gaming and this is Tactical Advantage Episode 8. Capture the flag on Operation Riverside. Now, the first tip that I can give you for capture the flag is going to be figure your play style for this type of match. For this type of map, figure out what you're going to do and what your enemy is going to try and do. Try and pre and pee everything they do. Now, first thing I do is go in for an attack. You want to, That first flag is probably the most important. It sets the pace for the rest of the match. The team that's aggressive enough to take that first flag really quick usually puts the other team kind of on a defensive standpoint. Now, the good thing about capture the flag is there's almost always action. There's not a real long period of running or driving to try and get somewhere. Even on the console. It, it is actually really, really well balanced and well played for the console. And I really enjoy this game mode. It's become probably my new favorite. <laughs> so. Now you see right here I'm kind of trying to get to the flag. And I have a choice to make. Helicopter or dirt bike. Later in the match I would use the helicopter. If I trust the helicopter pilot, which I don't trust that guy. But earlier on I will grab a dirt bike because... They haven't had a chance to really mine the entire map. Now tank mines are a complete plague on capture the flag because it's hard to run a flag on foot. <laughs> it's pretty much damn near impossible because then you get everything coming after you because you're always on the mini map. The dirt bike's usually the best bet but it has no warning if you're going to get javelin like I think the guy who was riding with me just did. Or no, no, he got shot by the Hummer. <laughs> okay. I've been trying to figure out what actually happened to that thing. But, you know, I got off at the right time and got the cap. And if the enemy team hasn't made a big push after that first flag, it's a good idea to kind of hang back into your deployment. And what this guy's doing is kind of a bitch move. He's C4ing the flag, which... Honestly, isn't helping too much. He, I don't think he actually gets many kills by doing that. And I'm just trying to hang back to take out this initial rush that I'm seeing. So we get them, and then we decide it's time to go in for another attack. I go 17 and 4 in this match, so I don't really do too horrible. And it makes for a good gameplay. Now, the fun part about these dirt bikes is just the amount of stuff you can do with them, all the jumps you can take them over. And I kind of derp the roadkill there. As you see, the guy's running around throwing out tank mines. There's going to be tank mines just randomly thrown all over the map and capture the flag. You just gonna got to kind of be alert to it and stay on your toes about it. Keep your mind about you and you're good. Now, for some reason, I've been having issues with my knifing button. And I think what it is is I was trying to get on the bike. I thought I was actually kind of on the bike already, so I was trying to get on it and go and get to this flag. Now, quick important tip for this is return your flag. Do whatever you can to return your flag. I have returned flags while holding their flag, which isn't always the smartest move, but... If you get stuck on a bad team, then it falls on you more than you know. Because on a bad team, you're going to lose. But a good player on a bad team can still kind of turn the game around. It doesn't happen too often, but... You know, I've seen stuff like... I've played on Metro where nobody was making a push. But if you can push through and get that first objective back, your team kind of spurs back into action. And you'll see a lot of stuff in capture the flag like a lot of people trying to spawn camp you and spawn trapping is horrendous in this game mode and it's really common especially when people get a hold of both helicopters and then you'll have that one guy who just kind of flies around and <sighs> excuse me murders you back at your spawn and that could be pretty horrible if you can avoid getting spawn trapped then it's generally going to be a pretty fun game. <laughs> so, yeah. Of course, you will always, there's always those guys who just kind of hide back at the back of the map sniping. And then there's always 
that chance that you'll get in against that one team where everybody's defensive. Nobody plays offense. They do not care to capture your flag. They just want kills. And they will sit back in their flag area. All 12 to 30 something of them. And it gets, it, it's irritating. Like, you're trying to enjoy the gameplay, but you can't do it because everybody's back in their deployment area. Secret to do to get dealing with that is usually if they're back there, they're going to be spamming javelins and stingers. Push on foot. Do not be afraid to run these maps. Get about halfway on the dirt bike, jump off, and walk it. Why? Because they cannot lock onto you if you're running. <laughs> that's just to me that that's a big thing. I get killed more by javelins than I do by gunfire half the time. Simply because you'll have those guys that are doing like what that guy probably was doing. Trying to javelin or stinger a vehicle. And I'm back here just trying to clear out these rocks where these guys are just kind of camping out. And trying to hold it down from up here. Of course I'm going to turn around. Surprise! That was kind of painful. <laughs> but, you know, to me it's, it, it is actually pretty funny. So, you know, I got to give a, a, a thumbs up to the roadkill. That was actually pretty creative. Most guys would probably try that, but they would botch it in some way. Or they would get out and just shoot me and go back to camping the AA gun up in the hills. Ugh. Ugh. Shit. I am, like, actually tired. I might take a nap after I, do, after I finish this. Anyways, right here. Know your spawns. And my teammate gave me a really good spawn. I'm over here trying to find the guy that's kind of hiding out here that my teammate's trying to kill. There he is. And it becomes kind of a... Battle of decisions here in a second. Now... Oh, no, wait. That's next. Alright. Now, this one... Excuse me for the lapse in memory. We grab the flag and I start taking my back route. I love using this back route. It's one of the low, least patrolled areas, but of course there's this one guy who just randomly throws tank bombs around. And he actually did a good job on placing them right here. Did you see, there he is. Kermit the Fark. I have to say, that's probably like the dumbest name I have seen. It's not original, it's just kind of slow and retarded. And the guy's going back there trying to tank mine our deployment. What he does, he tank mines the tank that's back there and then he drives off and he shows just how ignorant he can be. This is seriously a bitch move if you're gonna spawn camp a team. You know, it's kinda fucked up. It's not, a, to me it's not a viable tactic. But at the same time I can see why because vehicles are such a threat. Now, another big thing why I like using the Magnum, you can take out mines. You can do it with the Rex too, but something about the Magnum. It's it's always consistent for me and it's always it's kind of like a really I guess reliable weapon. I like them nineteen eleven. I've owned one in outside of the game and stuff, and here I go botching the dirt bike jump twice. But in this game the to me the Magnum just kinda it just kind of outdoes it. And that guy just got fucked up. Okay. Now, once again, this is a slower push. And I've noticed on slow pushing, you tend to be fairly successful on actually getting to where you need to be. Otherwise, you'll usually end up hitting tank mines or people will spot you out. And then you'll get picked off by a javelin. Or you'll fly in and get spammed with stingers and stuff like that and those are just so common on these maps the stingers the javelins and then there's also the AA Jeep so what I'm gonna do here I'm gonna push into their base and our guys gonna take their flag but they got our flag so I'm like okay I'm gonna chill out in this base a little bit and try and get our flag back now the guy with our flag is next to me, but I'm going to take out this <coughs> recon guy who's over here, too. <coughs> if you don't take him out, it can be problematic. Go up here and take out the flag carrier. 
kind of hard to really tell where he's at. But I get the kill, and this is de it's decision time. Do I want to get shot by a tank or not? Not really a rough decision. I decide instead of going after the flag, I'm going to try and either kill the tank or push the tank back. Keep them distracted, let my teammates get a little bit closer. And this is where RPGs kind of annoy me because they just feel real weak against tanks. That might just be me and yeah, I'm not really in the best placement for it. I'm I'm hitting it in the side. I know it dies quicker if you shoot it in the back, but yeah, RPG just kind of feels a little weaker than it should be. Like it should do just a little bit more damage to the armor. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people who would disagree with me on that, and, you know, I think they did a pretty good job with it. Now, right here we're just trying to push forward and we're trying to take out the guy with the flag, he gets taken down. They're going to pick it back up again. I'm still trying to kill or push this tank back. This tank keeps rolling back. I don't believe I ever actually kill it, but he keeps getting pushed back. Now you see the guy with the flag pushing up. You see all our people pushing up into the hills. I'm trying to pick them off with the Magnum. I'm usually a really good shot with the Magnum, but I was just kind of off on this segment. Said, hey, I need to pick up a kit. All right. Now, I don't like this kit. I don't like having an ACOG or whatever it is on the SG-553. I'm not a big fan of the SG itself. It just doesn't seem to be consistent like I would like it to be. But, you know, I know a lot of people do stand by that gun. It's fairly solid. I just I just feel so inaccurate when I use it. <laughs> I would rather use the M4A1 or the, AK, or the AK-74U, which I really have never used much of. But... I've used it a lot today. I used it some yesterday, and I, I'm really liking it. It's reminding me how good some of the guns actually are on Engineer, because they always feel kind of like a letdown to me. But once you get used to the carbines, they're pretty easy to handle. They're pretty decent. They're not the assault rifles, but they're the next best thing, pretty much. <sighs> Yeah, I'm sorry. I keep yawning. I'm worn out. Now, this will be the end of this match. And I think we did pretty good. We captured six flags. It only took us 12 minutes. Which is pretty good. It's pretty well unheard of in my eyes. Uh, got on the dirt bike, survives at the end. Go ahead and let him have his life. He did pretty good to avoid getting killed. So... If you guys enjoyed this and want to see more Tactical Advantage, let me know. Let me know what kind of tips you want. And leave me a rating. So, yeah. Hopefully you guys liked this video. And hopefully the commentary didn't bore y'all to death with all the yawning and stuff. And have a nice night, YouTube. Y'all take it easy. And happy Easter.